Talking about uh, European non-listed real estate debt, I will focus on the non-listed part because that's what we do at INREV. Uh, but before I talk about debt, I want to talk about what's happening in the equity markets first. And this is the research that Richard has uh, mentioned. We just released our European um, fund index um, this morning. And as you can see, the Q3 results are already coming in negative, quite sharply actually, given it's a pan-European index. Uh, minus 1.6% is the performance of which close to 300 basis points is the capital growth decline. And actually, if you break it down into different markets, some, such as UK in particular, are moving much faster than that. So that's a clear direction of travel. Uh, if you compare and contrast to the global financial crisis, uh, it's a little bit difficult to speculate right now what degree of the correction will be. It probably won't be as much as the global financial crisis, but there will be a deep correction in the foreseeable future. What we also see is it's happening faster. And I think part of the reason behind that is I think there is no reluctancy to correct and take the hit in the same way as we have seen during the financial crisis because the level of gearing is not quite as high. If you look at the red line, which illustrates the average level of gearing in the index, and you know we're talking about uh, more than 330 funds and more than 500 billion worth of assets here, uh, at the peak uh, or at the end of um, 2020, uh, 2008, it was close to 40%. Now it stands at just over 21%. So that's uh, good news, I suppose, in the current environment. But what does it mean for the debt funds? I mean, we have to uh, recognize that we are now moved into different interest rate environment. And even once the corrections come through, and the markets are starting to recover both from the economic side and the real estate fundamental side, the interest rates will be normalizing to above what we got used to over the last 10 to 15 years. And that means, uh, in some ways, uh, on the risk return profile, debt strategies are becoming attractive. So linking to what we have seen from the capital raising perspective over the last few years, in 2021, uh, when we look at the, all the capital that was raised for European uh, non-listed real estate, um, 12 billion was uh, for uh, that specific strategies in the non-listed space. That's a record high. Uh, but I think going forward in 2022, when we get these numbers and in the near future, those numbers are likely to go up further in the non-listed space. And that's already a message from the marketplace uh, when we speak to them. So let's talk about structure a little bit, just to give you context. If you think about size of the lending market, uh, of course, the U.S. market is the largest, the most mature, and much more diverse in terms of composition of lenders. Um, it's because of its size, the kind of debt, uh, private debt side is only about 3% of the market, but insurers play a large role, and there is lots of diversity with agencies involved in the CMBS part. When we think about UK, uh, that's a much smaller market, uh, but the space that the non-listed uh, debt uh, funds have taken has already been quite notable. It's now accounting for about 10%. And actually, uh, the latest studies by uh, Bayes Business School revealed that in the first half, which is known by the Montford University, most of you will know it, it's been running for decades now, uh, revealed that in the first half of 2022, the non-listed debt new lending has outpaced that of traditional banking. And that's the, for the first time on record. So I think that is a direction of travel that we are expecting. And for Europe too, Europe is, uh, in terms of non-listed space for that, is evolving. It's behind the UK, uh, but I think the current market circumstance will accelerate uh, some of the trends, particularly on the senior side of things. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So this is the universe that we cover as, at INREV, the European Debt Vehicles Universe. Uh, you, you see the left chart, number of vehicles, and the one on the right is actually the target equity. And over the last six, seven years, the space has doubled effectively. So it's now close to 100 vehicles and 60 billion 
uh, worth of assets. What is interesting there is that majority of the vehicles are close-end in structure. That has been the case in the past, uh, but also if we look at the recent launches uh, in the past two, three years, and also some of the initiatives um, that come through from the regulatory point of view, uh, the closed uh, end structure is the vehicle of choice. In terms of actual loan type and loan generation strategy, um, what we are seeing is there is a lot of senior lending out there. Um, quite a notable proportion is pure senior lending, and then significant proportion is also mixed lending, which is a um, you know, mix of senior lending and then subordinate and preferred equity or just subordinate. But broadly speaking, about 87% um, of the universe is in that senior or mixed space. And I think given the current market conditions and where we are moving in terms of uh, the opportunities to get um, risk return profile, senior is uh, going to be the choice uh, going forward. When it comes to a uh, loan generation strategy, we have uh, direct lending, which is quite a notable part, or both. The loan acquisition uh, segment is still very, very small, and I think it's just is a function of quite a small market as well, so no surprises there, I suppose. Uh, what is important to highlight is those funds which are specialists in senior lending are larger in size. So they tend to be about 650 billion, uh, million uh, on average, and that's about, uh, you know, quite a bit higher than about 470, 480 average of, of in the overall space. In terms of structure by uh, country and sector, um, the same as actually in the equity markets, we've seen that uh, in the uh, non-listed real estate equity market, we see that in the non-listed real estate debt space. When it comes to country, uh, multi-country segments dominate. Um, it's about 70% of the uh, universe when we look at the target equity. And of the space, which is the single country, no surprises there, UK is much more prominent there in, in that space. When it comes to sector strategy, well, actually, very vast majority is multi-sector. Almost uh, all of the funds that we have on record are multi-sector. And those that are not are in residential, either pure residential or development, residential development. And I think that's where, uh, on the development side, that may be where some of the stress will be coming through going forward. Talking about stress, maybe a little bit of comfort to those who are in the non-listed real estate debt space already. If we look at the plan termination across the 80 vehicles which are closed and in structure, um, most of them are, we don't have actually uh, terminations, many terminations at all in 2023. And then they're on general somewhere between five and seven, uh, which are due to terminate over the following the next four years. Uh, they also have, majority of the 80 close-end vehicles, have a provision to extend. So there is a little bit of comfort and then there is a buffer in terms of timing uh, when it comes to the termination pipeline on the non-listed real estate debt fund. I'm not saying our data is perfect. I think one of the functions of this space is that in transparency is a huge issue. And I will talk about that, particularly on the mezzanine side. I think the information on the mezzanine side is very transparent. So what does that mean? Well, I think if we go back, the kind of emergence of the non-listed real estate debt funds in Europe has happened as the market opportunity opened up after the global financial crisis. It took some time. Uh, it started to really power charge in the UK in the last few years, but also in Europe. And the servicing of the financing gap that is left by the traditional lenders is really what the space is catering for. I think it's offering an attractive risk return profile and also a, a very healthy diversification for the market. So the lending market space should be diverse in terms of lender choice, makes it more competitive, makes it more healthy. Uh, you probably will hear later today about uh, the focus going forward, given where we are uh, in the market. I think this, the shift towards senior, we have already been seen for the last year or two. Um, even in the mixed loan strategies, I think we have seen shift towards more senior space. 
uh, I think that is to continue and be even more prevalent. The other uh, opportunity is, uh, well, we need to remember that for now, it's still an unregulated market. And I think quite uh, lots of advantage has been taken from that uh, by the participants on both sides, just because it's faster to transact. The regulatory and reporting re um, requirements you know, are not strict there, so you can execute faster. But the regulators are starting to recognize that this is a growing space and starting to uh, kind of look into uh, what needs to be done. In particular, lately we have a proposal, a revision to AFMD uh, for specifically non-listed real estate debt funds. One is that if there is a sell on, on the, of the loan, uh, the proposal is that the, the seller should be uh, retaining about 5% of the economic value. And the second one is if uh, the fund generates more than 60% uh, in loans, it should have close-end structure just to uh, control for liquidity uh, issues, uh, just so there is no uh, <laughs> um, crisis that we have seen in the past. And it's about treating uh, and protecting investors equally. I also think uh, that the non-listed real estate debt uh, has an opportunity to step up into the ESG space. Because the commercial real estate in Europe is under a lot of pressure to decarbonize, and the traditional lenders, you know, they're not, it's not easy for them to move into that kind of repositioning space in terms of reporting and regulatory uh, perspective. So again, this is an opportunity, a strategic one uh, for the non-listed real estate debt. Talking about transparency or rather lack of, uh, I'm just going to give you an invitation to look into InRev Debt Vehicle Universe, which is a database of debt funds. Uh, which includes information about fund characteristics, uh, you know, such as loan strategy, size, domicile, uh, vintage, um, and so on. It is really your window to investors because uh, InRev is an organization for investors, large and small, and we are there to provide transparency and standards, so it's easy to provide information and get that access to investors. It does not contain sensitive information for that reason, just to make the data provision easy. And you don't have to be a member of InRev to contribute. So what I'm really inviting everyone in the room, because you are engaged in this space, is to encourage uh, your business partners and yourself to be part of this um, important initiative of getting more data, getting better understanding of the market. So in the nutshell, healthy evolution of the market, more diverse lending space, uh, growing, and I think the current market conditions will accelerate some of the segments of evolution, particularly on the senior side. UK is on the lead. Uh, in the lead, like I've mentioned, we had non-traditional lenders coming through as the uh, bigger share of the market in the first half of this year. It is an opportunity-driven market, so it's non-uniform. It's not um, regulated yet. Uh, and it's relatively early in, in the stages of evolution. What it means is understanding it is tricky, and I think there will be more innovative uh, solutions in the marketplace in the next few years as well. Uh, watch out for AFMD. I'm not saying the proposals are final. They're still very much in Brussels. They can be revised and changed, but I think that's something to keep in mind on because I know that some of the managers were looking into uh, launching open-end structures or semi-open-end structures when it comes to non-listed uh, debt vehicles, so maybe it's something to watch there. Uh, but also uh, European taxonomy, uh, I think there's a component there to be mindful of. And uh, of course the opportunity to continue to serve, uh, serve the financing gap that was created by uh, traditional lenders, but also the strategic opportunity when it comes to ESG-focused debt. A mezzanine segment is less transparent, so I hope to hear a lot more from the panel on that segment of the market. And as a result of the lack of information, uh, measuring performance is quite tricky. I think there's very different structures out there and approaches in the evolving market. So I think there's also an interesting uh, discovery there for us to be having in the next few years. So uh, I think... Next few years will be interesting, some stress, but also quite an evolutionary, which is an opportunity for us. Thank you for listening, and I hope it's helpful for the discussion.